Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to viruses, the structure of viruses, the structure of HIV, and then we'll finish with a summary. So viruses are a type of pathogen which is a harmful agent which can cause disease. Other pathogens include things like bacteria and fungi, but a virus is a specific type and there are many different types of viruses. We describe viruses as being non-living because they don't really reproduce on their own. And they're basically just a complex particle and not an actual cell. So they're basically just a collection of different molecules held together. So we can't really classify them as living, but they're also not dead either. Viruses can only replicate when they've entered living host cells. So host basically refers to the idea that they invade another organism like ourselves, and the host plays host to their presence. And those cells in the host have to be living with its own machinery. So they have to enter the host cells first, and only inside the cell can they replicate. The viruses have to enter the cells of the host that they infect in order to survive. So if the virus just entered our body, living in the tissue fluid wouldn't be enough. It would probably be a dangerous environment. So it has to actually go inside the cell. And then once it's inside the cell, it has the right machinery to use in order to replicate itself. The overall purpose of the virus is to replicate itself and spread as much as it possibly can. So the viruses end up hijacking the host cell's protein production machinery in order to replicate. So thinking about when a virus enters the cell, in order to replicate itself, it needs to make new proteins. So it has to use the host's protein making machinery in order to form more of itself. For example, the ribosomes. The ribosomes are organelles involved in protein production or protein synthesis. And so it needs to use this in order to make more viruses. Eventually, after it's gone through its reproduction inside the host cell, the new virus particles which have formed end up bursting out of the host cell, and in the process, they kill it. So now, having used the machinery of the cell, the virus has become a much larger number of virus particles, and now it's filling up the cell and they need to escape. So what happens is they burst open, and the cell of the host ends up dying. This process goes on and on through various cells through the tissues of the host, and this is how the viruses infect the host and they cause disease. So even though the virus is only focused on replicating itself, it's not so focused on causing us harm. It does cause us harm because many cells and tissues get damaged in the process of cells bursting open and dying. For example, smallpox or chickenpox. We see these lesions or spots all over the body due to this damage that viruses are causing. Viruses have a very specific structure. And we can see just from a diagram that viruses are very different in their structure to bacterial cells. Bacterial cells are living, just like eukaryotic cells, i.e. plants or animals. And they're still very different to us. However, they are living. But virus particles, on the other hand, are non-living. And they have, as you can see, many differences between bacteria and themselves. Because they're not cells, viruses do not have any organelles. So they have no ribosomes. They don't have any mitochondria and they don't have a nucleus. So they're not able on their own to do many of the processes that these organelles carry out. They can't carry out their own respiration, they can't hold their own genetic information in a safe area, and they can't produce their own proteins. The most important problem with this is that they cannot make their own proteins in their own particle because they don't have the ribosomes. The ribosome is the unit or organelle involved in translation, and they read mRNA in order to form a protein. And to make any organism, we need to be able to make proteins. But the virus can't do this, so it has to find another way to do this. Viruses have their own genetic material, and it can either be DNA, like with us, or it can be RNA. Remember, DNA is a double-stranded molecule. We can see two strands intertwining, whereas RNA is only one single strand, but still in the same basic shape. And the genetic material is kept safe, enclosed inside a protein coat called a capsid. So looking back at the diagram of a virus, we have the genetic material in the center, which could be either DNA or RNA. And then to protect this, we have this kind of coat around the edge, and it can vary in its complexity. But this is always a protein coat known as a capsid. Sometimes the virus can have a membrane, and on the viral membrane surface, they have attachment proteins sticking out. And these proteins can allow the virus to attach to the host cells. So if the virus has invaded the host and it approaches a host cell, it needs a way of entering the host cell. Remember, cell membranes surround our host cells so that it's a protection mechanism. 
so it can't just easily pass through. So the virus has these proteins on its end, or around its envelope, called attachment proteins, and they sort of do what they say on the tin. They attach to certain receptors on the host cell, or antigens, or proteins, and they use this interaction to then enter the cell. And we tend to describe these attachment proteins on the virus as being viral antigens. Antigens are proteins that we recognise and recruit the immune system with, so a viral antigen is simply one of these found on the end of a virus. And it's often these kind of proteins that the immune system mounts its attack on. So here's a table of some of the summarised differences between bacteria and viruses. Bacteria are living, whereas viruses are non-living, and bacteria are unicellular organisms, so they are one cell on their own. Viruses are not cells, they're just complex particles. Bacteria are much larger, they can be about a thousand nanometers. Viruses can be very, very small, about 20 to 400 nanometers. Bacteria reproduce through asexual fission, so what this means is we have one cell dividing into two cells, these would divide into two, and it would keep going. However, viruses cannot make their own proteins and so they can't replicate themselves. So they have to invade a host cell and they replicate using the host cell's own machinery. Bacteria is, are cells so they contain organelles, therefore they can make their own proteins and materials. Viruses don't have any organelles because they're not a cell. HIV is a good example of a virus to illustrate the structure and how it's important for the virus's process. HIV stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus because it does cause a deficiency in our immunity. It's a virus that infects humans, it's a massive problem, and it leads to a disease known as Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, also known as AIDS. So this is a 3D structure of the virus. First of all, the HIV has a lipid envelope. So around the genetic material, we have an envelope, and the envelope is basically like a phospholipid bilayer. So it's kind of an encasing barrier, much like a cell membrane. The genetic material is RNA, and this is contained in the centre of the virus, so it's a single-stranded molecule. And HIV itself also contains an enzyme inside the particle, called reverse transcriptase. And the reverse transcriptase's function is to generate DNA from the HIV's RNA. So the reason why we do this, or why the virus does this, will become clear in a second. But just know that inside the particle of the virus are these enzymes, called reverse transcriptase, and essentially, it takes the virus's own genetic material, which is RNA, and it turns it into DNA. So it makes it double-stranded. So because of this, we describe the HIV and some other viruses as being a retrovirus, because it generates DNA from RNA using this enzyme reverse transcriptase. So retro means going backwards, and in this case, we've gone from the single-stranded RNA into making DNA. Whereas usually, when we talk about transcription, we're talking about making RNA from DNA. So this is why it's a retrovirus and we're going in the reverse direction. So it's a reverse of transcription, so it's reverse transcriptase. So why does it do this? The DNA that it makes contains the genes of the virus, and the reason it makes DNA is so that it can then integrate into the host cell's DNA. Remember, if we're talking about a human cell, or a host cell, it will contain the genetic information as DNA. We have DNA in our own cells. So if the virus wants to incorporate its own genetic material into the DNA, it has to be in the form of DNA, because RNA won't work. So it then uses the enzyme inside the virus to make DNA instead, and then this can go in the nucleus and be added into the host cell's genome. So now that it's got its DNA inserted into the genome, the host cell will start generating new HIV particles using the host cell machinery. So now that the DNA is integrated into the host cell genome, whenever our protein machinery reads this, it's going to assume this is one of our genes. So the machinery makes proteins, which get assembled into viruses, and therefore the virus has managed to replicate itself. And what it will do is it will make new virus particles with their own RNA inside of them, and eventually of course these will burst out of the cell. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.